What's up, comic fan, comic fans? And it's time for that new comic book day haul plus review. So we're gonna go through some old books. We're gonna go through some new books. The books from this week, some 50 cent pickups, and we're gonna do it all after this. Spartans, what is your profession? Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. And uh, if you'd be so kind, please uh, remember to hit the notification bell, subscribe, comment down below, leave me a like. All right, let's get into it. Let's do this. Uh, what do we got? What do we got? Let's start with the 50 Cent books. All right, I picked up 50 Cent Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow. This is the C cover, the cardstock cover. I don't know if it's wrapped around or not. I doubt it. It is not. And who does this cover? Ugh. Take a look. I don't see anything. But anyway, I heard really good things about this book. And I figured uh, issue one for 50 cents. Why not pick it up? Gary Frank and Alex Sinclair did this cover. So it was 50 cents. I've heard a lot of good reviews about Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. So I picked up number one, 50 cents. Mm. All right, next up was a just a cover buy and like, I don't know, I just thought it was cool. This is AVP, Aliens vs. Predator, Xenogenesis, number one. I don't think there's anything really big about this book. I just dug it. I liked it. Uh, it looks like it has a little color rub. A few spine things, but 50 cents. Aliens vs. Predator. Why not? Alright, next up we have Axis number four. This is also 50 cents. This is the first appearance of Kla. Created by the Scarlet Witch. It's a uh, Evil Hulk. I think Zhenmu also created a cluck back in the day, but this is the Scarlet Witch. Look at that dude, looks pretty, pretty evil. A lot of iterations of the Hulk these days, a lot of different Hulks. Why not pick them all up and see if any of them actually hit? All right, next up, we got some DC goodness from the 90s. We've got Grant Morrison's JLA, number one, all right? And this is, uh, the first appearance, first team appearance of the Hyper Clan. So that's, that's cool. I think there's some cameos in here or something else too, but it's like a $10 book. Sweet. Then we got uh, Justice League number 23. This is like a $3 book or whatever. It's still Grant Morrison. It's got a giant Starro on the cover. Uh, there are some cameos, of first, no, some first appearances in here, including uh, Batman 1 million. I didn't know that was a thing. But uh, yeah, Grant Morrison. I mean, JLA run, why not? And then I found another book. This this one goes for, I think what I sold was like six bucks, eight bucks, something like that. This is JLA number 26, still Grant Morrison. And this has the first uh, Jakeem Thunder in there. I think there's some other first, uh, some other cameos in here. Uh, some dude who becomes the third knight. That was cool. Nice little cool pickups for 50 cents. Yeah, can't go wrong with the 50 cent band, especially when you find those books. And those books were bagged and boarded, so they were pretty minty. Not all of them, I'd say 90% of the ones in the 50 cent band are bagged and boarded, so they, they come up looking a little, uh, a little poor, but those, those are good, really good books. All right, we're gonna get into this week's books. First off from Marvel, we got Moon Knight number 14, Jen McKay. I am not caught up on this, uh, so I didn't read issue 14, but from what I've read so far, it's pretty good. Moon Knight is a pretty vicious character. I mean, oof, a couple issues back, he was it Wax Man? Put him in like a airtight steel container and then buried him in cement. He was like, hey, you're staying there for years. You're a murderer. Which I mean, I get it, justice. But Moon Knight, damn dog. He's like, yo, I know that was extreme to his crew, and he's like, if you want to go, you can go. Now's the time to leave. Nobody really walked away. Moon Knight is just dirty. All right, next up for Marvel, I actually read this one. This is Edge of Spider-Verse, number one. This is the Francis Lanille U uh, variant cover. I think this is, I don't know, it's like cover half or something like that. But this is um, Spider-X. This is the first cover, well, it's not the first cover appearance, because he's also on covers A and, I don't know, I want to say like C or something like that. But this is his first solo cover, <laughs> Spider-Rex. 
I just thought it was cool when I picked it up. Uh, overall, this book is, it's got some decent stories in it. I thought Dan Slott was gonna have a, a bigger uh, story in here. His story was like three or four pages, apparently he's too busy. <laughs> but uh, this series is gonna introduce us uh, to new and old Spider-Verse characters, just catching up on them. In this one, you have uh, Spider-Rex, and then there was like a British, no, Scottish Spider-Man, I forget his name. But yeah, he was in here. I'd look it up if I had more time. I don't know you're up there somewhere. I don't know. Um, but yeah, no, uh, it's an okay book. It's got like little vignettes. Aranya is playing a big part for Spider-Girl, Spider-Girl, Spider Spider-Girl, Spider-Woman. So she's playing a big role in this series. I haven't seen any um, any really big villains though. Yeah, it's just an introduction, and they're, they're fighting a few guys here and there. Overall, solid, solid book. If you're into the Spider Verse, you might enjoy it more than if you're not. All right. Next up, we got the uh, Dark Crisis number three Red Canary design variant. It's a pretty hot book this week. Yeah, I have not read it, so we'll get to it eventually. Um, I read Dark Crisis 1, I said I read 2 and 3. I have them all, just have to read them. Falling behind, falling behind just like in Flashpoint. And uh, I am, I'm catching up on this one as well, but let's just say, this is not Bruce Wayne by the way guys, this is his dad, all right? And he's, you know, he's this other Batman, and he even says it in one of the books. He's like, I'm not Bruce. Bruce is much more meticulous and, and thoughtful. I'm just paraphrasing here. Um, he's he's just more on action. Like, this, this Batman will use a gun, and he will shoot you in the face. <laughs> but, you know, he likes... He's also a doctor, so he can, like, break your arm and be like, all right, broke it without arterial damage. You know, he'll be in pain and won't pass out. You know, stuff like that. So... Oof, this Batman is brutal, but that's a reason to read Flashpoint Beyond, to see a very, very brutal Batman, a Thomas Wayne Batman. All right. Oh, and that's the whole thing of this, if you haven't read it, is somebody has reversed the Flashpoint, uh, well, at, or has changed time again, to the point where Bruce actually dies, he's the one who dies, and Thomas and Martha live, and this is the Batman we get out of that universe. So it's, it's a good telling of what could have been. A what if story. All right, next up we got Batman 126, Fall of the Dark Knight, another Batman book. Um, yeah, Batman is just uh, getting old. But uh, what? There's a lot of Batman this week. Oh, this is a uh, failsafe. Fights failsafe in the book. I almost forgot. Damn, I'm doing reviews and I'm forgetting what I read. So he fights failsafe in this one, and it was a pretty insane battle. This failsafe, it's, it's, it's a mech, or an android, if you will. So it's metallic, it knows Batman's moves. It basically beats down Batman to the point where he retreats, and Batman rarely retreats. And he didn't want to retreat this time, but he knew he had to. And uh, yeah, he had to do it to live. The uh, Bat family kind of saves the day. You had um, the Batgirls show up. Nightwing, the signal shows up. It was like a nice signal when he, when he comes through. Uh, Robin was there, and Batman's just like, oh no, he's gonna destroy these guys. And they managed to just hold them off long enough for them to kind of get away. Um, but yeah, Batman's hurt. Oh, and then he does this whole, at the end, it's just, he becomes more of the Batman. You, you'll have to read it to find out what I mean by that. Of course, we had to pick up the uh, Todd McFarlane Pretty sure this is Todd. That's what the guy at the store told me. But this is the, the failsafe cover. Not the first appearance of this failsafe, by the way. They did a design cover for failsafe. And let's see. Trying to see. They don't list who did the alternate. They have a lot of alternate covers this week, by the way, guys. So anyway. Usually Todd signs his, his covers. I do not see a Todd signature here, but I also do not see any other signature. Nope. This isn't Todd. This is Gillian March after Todd. 
Julia March did this cover, and it's, it's like a homage. All right, that makes more sense. Now I believe that. All right, Julia March is not a bad artist either. If I go to, well, if I go, when I go to New York Comic Con, if he's there, I might have him sign this, because this is just a dope cover. All right, next are two books in a row that I'm still catching up on, but these are books that definitely are worth mentioning, and these are some great indie books. Um, some might argue that this one, because it's from Image, is not really indie anymore, but in the spirit of indie, this book really deserves a lot of praise, and I think it's gotten a lot of praise, but this is Philadelphia, Rodney Barnes, Jason, Sean Alexander. Really good book. If you like vampires, dead presidents, and werewolves, definitely worth a purchase. And then we have Once in Future from Boom Studios, another indie. This is Kieran Gillen and Dan Mora. Again, this is an awesome book too. Art is spectacular. The writing is really good. And if you like, you know, your classic mythology and fables and all that other stuff, like King Arthur and Knights of the Round Table, check out Once in Future. All right, next up, we got Gunslinger Spawn number 10. The Gunslinger, he is, he's a trip. And say about this this is just a dope cover I love the dope cover you get into a fight with spawn they kind of you know whatever hash it out um, really isn't much happening in here except a lot of exposition and a little spawn gunslinger mono a mono action and you know what they did they did it so they could be friends they got into a fight to be friends and next up another spawn spawn book because you know, we can't get enough spawn and I'm just gonna open it up why not get all the spawn here and this one is uh, spawn versus uh, Cog Calistro Caligiostro <laughs> I always say his name wrong but anyway in this one like in that one, there's all sorts of factions being formed. I believe Gunslinger leads up to Scorched, by the way. Scorched number one kind of follows this issue spawn number 10. But I feel like Gunslinger came out like, uh, sorry, Scorched came out like two months ago. So, good luck going back in time. But there was one, there's one panel here. I thought there was a panel here that I wanted to show you. Maybe it just, Read better in my head. Oh well. Spawn just getting punched through the chest. How often we see Spawn these days? You know, King Spawn and all that other stuff. He's been really just eating butt if you've been reading the books and finally takes a little beating in this book. And last but not least, but probably one of my favorite books, not even a superhero book, is that Texas Blood. Alright, this is also out of image, Chris Condon and Jacob Phillips. I was gonna say Jason Phillips. Jacob Phillips. Uh, it's a really good book. Um, it's it's got everything you kind of need, like a little suspense, some drama, um, just some some old fashioned um, murder. <laughs> just good writing, uh, great art again, great writing, and just a really intriguing story. And you really like the characters in this one. And I did not like. I don't want to say I didn't like it, because I stood with it. The first arc is my least favorite of this. And if you made it through the first arc and you've read the second and now you're reading the third arc of this, oh, this is this is what good non-superhero comic book writing is. All right, and you do have a hero in here, the sheriff of the, cha of the town, uh, Billy Bob, Joe Bob, not Billy Bob, Joe Bob. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a really good comic, definitely worth the look, definitely worth a read. I mean, that was definitely one of my favorites. And these two books, even though I haven't read them, like I said, these are definitely two series you should check out. I believe Once in Future is actually coming to a close pretty soon. All right? All right, comic fan, comic fans! That was my new comic book day haul plus review. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, go ahead and throw me a thumbs up and comment down below if you would do so kindly. And if not, all right, I'm cool with it. All right? So again, do what you do. I'm going to do what I do. I'm going to get ready for next week's books. Peace!
Damn. You didn't see that coming. 